X-ray has reached to this uh, sensor. The composition of the sensor basically it is composed of thick plastic. Uh, the plastic is robust so that it will uh, uh, withstand the you know uh, uh, mechanical pressures uh, that uh, uh, to which the sensor is subjected. Uh, unfortunately, because it is plastic, uh, it becomes a little bit rigid, unlike the uh, analog films. It, uh, you don't have the possibility or the, uh, this, you cannot bend the uh, uh, sensor so that just to accommodate, it, accommodate the uh, curvatures inside the oral cavity. So this is a bit, uh, uh, it's not flexible. Uh, which reflects on a uh, placement inside the oral cavity. Some patients uh, cannot fully tolerate the uh, uh, placement of the sensor inside the oral cavity, especially if it is size 2, the big one, and if it is used within the sensor holders. So we have to be a little bit uh, uh, gentle when placing the sensor inside the oral cavity. When the photons reach to the uh, uh, plastic cover, they will penetrate this plastic cover at, as we agreed according to the uh, quantity of the photons uh, that have reached to the uh, uh, or passed through the tooth, whether they have been allowed or uh, uh, completely allowed, uh, completely prevented or partially allowed to pass through the tooth. So the sensor is going to receive varying amounts of X-ray photons. It will pass through this plastic cover and it will interact inside there will be a silicon chip. So the first part, the X-ray photons they are going to interact with is a silicon chip. The energy of the photons that they will give their energy to the silicon particles or silicon, uh, silicon atoms. So the area that has been, or let's say for animal, huh? in animal there are no photons to, uh, allowed to pass, so the silicon chip will receive no photons. While the area of the pulp chamber, for instance, which has allowed the um, uh, photons to pass, huh? uh, the silicon area in, or the silicon chip in this area will receive large amount of photons. The area of the dentina and enamel, uh, dentina and cementum will receive lesser amount than that of the photons, uh, than that of the enamel. Okay, so the energy of those photons will be given to the silicon atoms. So silicon atoms will absorb the energy of the photons. Absorb means that the kinetic energy of the photons will raise. Uh, will interact with the silicon atoms and they will raise the silicon atoms uh, uh, in the outer margin. They will absorb this energy or will take it or it will be given to the silicon uh, uh, electrons. They will rise in their orbits in an amount similar to the energy that they have received. And then they will go back to, the, to their normal status. So. Photons that have passed through the pulp will reach in an abundant amount to the uh, uh, silicon chip. So these, the, the electrons and the atoms of the silicon chip, they will absorb large amount of uh, uh, photons and then they will rise up in their orbit and then go back. So the energy which has been absorbed will not be lost it will be instead, it will be lost in the form of another type of energy, which is light. So, silicon chip, the function of the silicon chip actually acts as an intensifying screen. It receives energy, it receives photon, absorb the energy and lose it back into the form of light. So the silicon chip, which is what behind a pulp, will produce more light than that of the silicon part which was behind the dentina and cementum and this will emit more light than the area which is behind the enamel and uh, metal uh, fillings for instance. Okay, so what we have done
is that we have converted the X-ray photons passing through the tooth into light photons by the silicon chip, chip which has acted as uh, uh, an uh, uh, intensifying screen.